We're moving right along. So far we can see we've built our nav bar, our hero section, our logos, those cards we just made, and of course now it's time to build what could be argued is the most form. important- The form. Spoilers. It's the most important part of any site, the call to action, the form itself. When someone lands on this page, we want them signing up. What do we want them to sign up for? Calendar app. Calendar app, in that's space. right. In space. In space, yep. or wherever they are. So we're gonna break this into structure, into content, then the form structure itself, getting into specifics. We'll do styling and we'll cover combo classes again, this time on the button in the form. Oh, and finally, we'll cover the success and error states. What happens when someone successfully completes the form? And of course, what happens when someone once again unplugs the router? Let's get right into it. Let's start with structure. Of course, we're getting used to this by now. We're gonna add some of our basics. So we'll collapse this section. We're looking at our high level structure right now. Let's go in and drag in a section for the form. Just drop that right at the bottom under the other sections and take a look. We need a few more things. Let's put in a container. We'll use Command D, quick find, just type container. Okay, well, that's the primary structure. There's some other stuff though. One more thing we want inside that container. We'll do Command E again. We're gonna add a form. So we'll just press return. And we have a couple options here. Of course, we want form block. We'll just press return. And now we have a form. By the way, that's our basic structure. Let's move into content. Now for the content, we're gonna do one more structural thing, but we'll only do that after we demonstrate two pieces of the content. So rather than talk about it, let's go in and just add that heading. So we'll add a heading on the top. This will be an H2. It's going to say request, request a demo. demo. That's right. And we'll add one more thing. We'll add a paragraph. And let's say experience the future of space travel and see for yourself how it can revolutionize your space, space travel, travel planning. planning. So here's the thing. We said we'd come back to another structural component. That of course can be a div. So for example, right here, if we see this is going a little long, it's kind of going from left to right. It's a wider paragraph here. If we want to constrict that, there's a few ways to do it. We could add a new class that constricts the maximum width and say, no more than 300 pixels. And it'll just kind of keep it narrow. But what if we change this H2 or what if this ends up going a little bit longer as well. Maybe we're gonna change, we're gonna change the size of it to something like that. Who knows? In other words, what if we wanna wrap both the heading and a paragraph with this div to keep everything neatly organized without having to style everything one by one? Well, we can do that. We can just add a div. So Command E, we'll just grab a div, press return, and we'll drag the heading and the paragraph into that div. Now, we still have that 300 pixel max on the paragraph. Let's get rid of that because that's not what we're going to use. Let's go in remove class. And again, to keep things neat and organized, let's go over here, clean up and remove the unused classes. Because what we're going to do here is set the styling on the div. So with our div block selected, let's call this what form wrapper, form content, form content wrapper. Perfect. A little wordy. We can set a max width on this of 300 pixels. And when we do, and we can always adjust that, notice how it's actually wrapping around everything. It's wrapping around the H2 and it's wrapping around the paragraph. So we'll keep everything neatly organized inside that container. So everything's to the left and everything is, let's see, 300 pixels. Yep. That's okay for now. That works. Let's move into the next part. That was content. Let's move into form structure. So by default, the form is gonna come with two different fields. Each will have a field label. Let's take a look at the anatomy here. Let's close that. So this is our form. Let's look at what's inside. Field label, text field, field label, text field. Four different things. And of course, a submit button. We wanna add one more field. So how do we do that? We can copy and paste, or we can hold down option or alt and just click and drag on the field label. So we've made a copy of it. Same thing on the text field, click and drag with option or alt held down and we'll create a duplicate underneath. And now we have three different fields. So this one says email address twice. Let's change this to company. And maybe this is a, let's go into the little gear icon here and we'll take a look at these settings. Well, first let's call the name company. So we could choose our type here, but plain is fine. And let's make this not required. So if someone doesn't have a company, they don't have to enter it if they don't want to. All right, let's escape. But the key here is that we want the structure, again, we know it's gonna go from looking like this to looking like this. We want that sort of horizontal design. So how do we do that? Well, let's actually take a look at the wrong way to do it or what would happen if we try to do that now. Let's, first off, this is the, the form content wrapper. Let's make sure that's out of the form. Let's put that in the container. And it didn't look different, but the reason we're doing that is because we wanna change some stuff on this form itself. 
So what do we want to change? We don't want these things vertical. We want them horizontal. And now we know how to do that because we're going to unlock the power of CSS Grid. No. No, it's Flexbox. It's flexbox. We're going to press Flex. And when we do, it's kind of what we want, but not really. The reason is, it is, just as we're telling it to do, it's taking everything, all the children of the form, everything inside this form, and it's kind of stacking them horizontally. If we did vertical, and stacking them vertically. Horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. Back to horizontal, now it's horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't really a demo there, it was just clicking a lot of buttons. But <laughs> if we want these things to still be horizontal, but we want each of these to be grouped together, so the field label and the text field, we can group them together. We know how to do that, it's a div. Let's go in and add a div, and we'll just drop that div, let's just say anywhere in here, and we'll add two of these to this first div. So we'll add the field label and the text field to the div. And with that div selected, let's call it field wrapper. Field wrapper. And we'll do the same for the others. Let's go in, select form, and we'll press Command E, type div. And of course, we want to add the same class. We'll call it field wrapper, press return. And of course, we'll add one more, another div. We can go ahead and put that right next to the other stuff. We're just dropping it inside the form. So let's do the same thing here. Let's make sure we're adding field wrapper, and we'll start doing our work. Let's put the field label in this first one, that text field in that field wrapper, and the same thing one more time over here and over here. We're just nesting these things inside that div. And of course, we want this div, we want this last field wrapper to actually come before the submit button, so we'll flip that order. So that's it. Design complete. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. But that's why we're moving from form structure to styling. So how do we fix this? Let's take a look at the anatomy again. We know we have this field wrapper that we just created this div wrapped around each of these pairs, each of these field label plus text field combos. So we know we have that, and of course we have the submit button. So when we want in CSS, when we want to make a change, we of course select, we start with the parent element. We added flex on this, we know what's happening there. We could justify, we could align these things however we want. There are lots of options we have here, but we actually want the children elements. In fact, these three children elements, these field wrappers, we want them to take up the full width, the full space available. So at the top of the style panel, we see flex child. These are settings we can apply to the children of a parent element when that parent element is flexed. Put way more simply, these are things inside of a parent that's flexbox. We can change the children properties. So let's grow if possible. And notice how, let's do that again. It expands, it'll take up the space if possible. When would it not be possible? Well, let's show an example. Let's take this form and say it's a width of 500 pixels. There's not much room, so if we select again and we say, let's grow if possible, it's not gonna do anything. There's not enough space. So undo, not 500 pixels, instead grow if possible, and it will take up that full space. When we get to responsiveness later, this will be really helpful for setting maximum constraints on everything so it's even and matched across all different devices. But there is something we want to do on the parent. Let's select form and let's add a little bit of space. A gap. A gap, that's right. Let's add some space between these columns. Notice as we do that, it's adding space between those divs. It's adding space in between each of those elements. Mm -hmm. So 30 pixels. Perfect. Of course, the next obvious thing is the button. So let's select our button. And we already have a class for this. We don't have to reinvent the wheel each and every time. You go in and type. This is major button, major button. Is that what we named it? That is, Mark says that's what we named it. That's what we named it. Major button. Why do we call it major button? I don't know. I don't I can't recall that that was what we named it. But. Okay. Fortunately we can rename these things. We can just call it button. So we want to style this button a little differently. We know how to do that. We're going to use a combo class. So we're going to click to the right of the class that says button, or the artist formerly known as major button, and we'll type form. So now we have button, but it's a specific modification of button called form. Let's go in here and make a couple changes. First off, let's unlink this. Up next, our color. Let's go for light a light pink. Light pink. Um, you want pink? Purple. No, purple. Oh, light purple. purple. Something like this? Yeah. Okay, and then we can go for the color. It's going to need to be something like, let's go to the let's brand see, color. Yeah. How's that? Perfect. You can also see it's AAA. It's what? AAA. Oh, trip, it has triple, triple A, a contrast a. ratio. This is a really important way to look at the contrast between foreground and background elements. So if we turn that on, we can just hit the eye right there. We can see that if we go up here, we're losing. The contrast ratio is going down. It's a little less legible. You can see it's failing miserably. So let's switch it back to the brand color, and that has a triple A contrast ratio. That's good for now. What about the position? Do you want it a little bit lower? No, I think the height 
it's a little bit tall right now so let's decrease the padding let's do like nine pixels top and bottom but it's not going to matter because nothing's changing the reason is we have to set properties on the parent. So this is what happens when we're debugging CSS and we're doing it in real time. This is good. So let's select the parent. Let's see form. And we can see the alignment of these things is going to stretch. That's why the button, even though we don't have padding set on it, that's why it's taking up that full height. So what do we do? We can just align to the end. Now it's too small. <laughs> it's okay. This is not a good button. It's going to work. We're going to make this work. So we could add padding back on the button. So with the button selected, button form, we could add, you know, nine or 10 pixels to do nine pixels top and bottom on the padding. And also notice these field wrappers, there's some space underneath. What's going on there? Well, we can take a look at our text field and say we see 10 pixels of margin. Sometimes when we click something, if we're not okay with the spacing, we can click that thing and see what's happening. Text field, well, there's 10 pixels of margin added by default. Let's zero that out. And by doing that, we've created a class called text field. Let's just quickly apply that to each of these. So we say text field and text field. So now they're all linked by their styling. And now we can see the alignment on the bottom is matched. The alignment on all these things is even and matched. So let's grab our section. Let's add that section class. So we have that padding. So we can take a look at the entire thing, which is missing one detail. Sada? What are we missing? The rounding on the text field. Three pixels. Text three pixels. All right, let's do that. Text field. Rounding. Three pixels. Three pixels. Nice. It's time to move into our last section, success and error. That's right. So this is our form. We can actually take a look. So with the form selected, let's select our form block. With our form block selected, we can see that, in fact, we can go to preview mode. And from preview, we can type in, oh, we could use Greamer for this, Greamer at webflow.com, company, webflow. And of course, we could submit. We see what it looks like to type in into these fields. Let's go out, and now we're out. But we can also do something else. With this form block selected, let's go over to element settings up here. See what happens when we change the state. Right now, we're in the normal state to success or error. Success is when the form has been successfully submitted, and this is what it will show. Thank you, your submission has been received. Maybe that's a little wordy. Thanks. Stay tuned. We can change the content. We know we can do that. We can add something new if we want. But for right now, let's make the success message look a little better. So with the success message block, with this block selected, let's go in and change the color. Let's just say white for right now or just transparent for right now. And we'll go in and maybe adjust the padding. So there's a little more space. This is OK. Maybe the color can be a minty green color with a much larger radius. How's that look? No. It's you know, horrible. All right. No, let's let's match with the three pixel at least. Okay, three pixels. Let's change this to something a little lighter. That's fine. Okay. Good for now. It's okay. It's okay. We'll come back to it in design review. Let's go to the form block and change that last state, which is error state. What happens when something doesn't go well? Something went wrong. Well, let's select our error message, and we can actually pull in. If we go to the style panel, we can actually pull in success. We know we have that success message. Maybe we can rename it message, and we can just set it to center. So what does that mean? Well, we first off don't want the same color on both. That's OK. But what does that mean? It means that when we're in our form, so if we select that form block again, we can see success and error have a similar formatting. Maybe that's OK. Maybe it's not. But the point is, maybe an error, we want to inherit those styles. So with message selected, we're just in the error state. We can say message, and we'll create a combo class for this one called error. Error. Let's go in and just change that color to kind of a red. But that's it. We made a full call to action. We built out our structure. We changed the text. That's the content. We structured the form. We styled it using Flexbox. We styled our button using a combo class. And finally, we looked at success and error messages. Up next, we have one more section on our site to build. Or more properly, we have one more section to build on our site. So let's jump into that in the next lesson where we'll build a footer. The call to action really is a critical part of any site, certainly any landing page. Share your form designs using hashtag Webflow 101 on Twitter, and we'll literally feature our favorites in a major upcoming production called Forms. <laughs> it sounds like a joke, but the last time we made a video called Building a Web Form, it got a quarter of a million, billion, trillion views on YouTube, on Twitter, 
on LinkedIn, everywhere basically. Million, billion views. It's still getting views right now. You should definitely go and see it and the next one that we're making.